QuickBooks Online 2023 E-Commerce Sales Simple Bank Feeds Only Method. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view on down below. Let's duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it. Back to the tab to the middle as the one to the right's thinking. Going to the reports on the left hand side. We want to choose the balance sheet. As that's thinking, we'll tab to the right. Reports on the left-hand side. This time, the profit and loss, the P and the L. Closing up the hamburger, e, changing the ranging. And we're going to go, let's do this time from 11.01.25 to 11.30.25 and then run it. So we'll put our information into that month, which doesn't have anything in it thus far. Tabbing to the left. Close in the ham boogie, same range that we're gonna change to 110125 to 11325 and run it. And then we'll tab to the left in the prior presentation. We talked about setting up our uh, bank feeds, which is gonna be one of the crucial integration processes, no matter what we're gonna do with our uh, other types of information that we're gonna pull in Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. From our third party platforms like the Shopify's, like uh, the e-commerce and so on. So obviously on the bank feed side of things, if we're just looking solely at the bank feeds, eventually the sales are going to happen on on the shopify side here and there's going to be more stuff going on than just the money we got from the client because or the customer for the inventory that we sold in the online cloud platform because there's also going to be fees and stuff that is happening however at the end of the day we're going to get some of that money that that was collected in the form of a deposit in our checking account right so now we've got our checking account over here and we can wait till it hits the checking account and that would be the simplest method to use however not having as much detail for it let's imagine we pull this information into an excel worksheet so i'm going to build an excel worksheet with an example problem and then uh, do some comparisons of the methods so i'll build this out with you here so we'll have a blank excel worksheet and we're just going to put some data within it this is typically how i format the excel worksheets when doing this i'm going to sc let's scroll in first i'm going to hold control and s zoom in on the scroll wheel i'm zooming in down here i'm at 280. i'm going to put my cursor on the triangle right click on the entire selected area to format and my starting format is usually currency bracketed and red negative numbers no dollar sign and let's keep the decimals this time two decimals so we can see the pennies so let's say okay and i'm just going to call this like the finance report uh, by day so if we were using something like a uh, a shopify type of situation then then we might have to go to these reports one way we can look at this is take a look at these reports and try to tie out the same report to the to the payout period which might be like a daily type of report now your your shopify store might have different reports depending on how much uh what plan you are in and then you could use similar methods for other types of uh of systems like an Amazon, they pay out like every two weeks. So they're gonna batch out the payments that happen. But the general idea is that there's gonna be multiple transactions that are happening in the payout period, whether they pay out one day or whether they're gonna be paying out uh, every two weeks. 
And so when we pull the information into our system, if we're looking at the reports, we're going to, we're going to group them together in conjunction or in alignment with, with all the transactions that happened during that time frame. So let's imagine that we, we pull this information and recreate it here in Excel so we can see it kind of in an Excel format. And we would have a similar situation, by the way, this is what we're going to end up with in a Shopify type of situation. Amazon sometimes does more of the, if you have an Amazon situation, they might do more of the kind of work on the Amazon side. There's a whole bunch of, you know, different classifications and whatnot that they could be, you know, adjusting your payment for in the report, you know, so that, so it could have a, a whole long list like this of adjustments that are, are made that we could take into consideration. So we'll take a look at another example uh, in the future. This one's going to be a little bit more basic of an example to get the idea. So let's highlight these two. I'm going to make this home tab font group. I'm going to make it uh, black and white is what I usually do for like headers. And then let's make the whole thing bold because I think that helps home tab font and bold. And then I'm just going to say that the sales information, I'm going to make this bold as well for these two cells, home tab, font, black and white. And then I'm going to say there's going to be gross sales. That's the top line sales, discounts, returns, and then net sales. So this will be our, our sample example. So let's say that the gross sales came out to the 1624.89 and then the discounts we're going to say I'm going to say is a negative 16.99 and then we're not going to have any returns here so I'll say zero here and I'm going to underline this home tab font group let's underline it and sum this up net sales then is the sum of these items and then we could also have shipping and sales taxes collected. And so I'm going to add these in and say this will be 4656 for shipping, no sales tax. Let's font group and underline this one so that we have then total sales, which is going to be then uh, the sum, let's say the sum of these items. Oops, I have two. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so the sum of those items, let's put some borders around it. I like to put borders. So I'll select the whole thing, home tab, uh, font group, and I'll put some borders around this. Now note that this information, if I, if I was to pull this from Shopify, you'll recall that we were looking at the analysis. We're looking at the reports in here, and then we're looking at the range of the reports that would be applicable to match out the payment. And then we can take a look at the actual payments that are going out, which in, in Shopify happens to be under the finances and then uh, the payments to pull the information here, which could include fees and there could be uh, payments that are coming through the Shopify because when we get paid by the uh, customers on like a Shopify, for example, they could pay us using the Shopify pay, which means that then the Shopify is going to be paying out from here, or they can use some other third party payment processor like a PayPal, uh, that, that would be the other format that we're going to get paid, which means we're not going to get the money ultimately from Shopify, but that's where we're going to get money when people pay in that way from that third party of uh, the PayPal. So so that's gonna be on this side of things. And notice in this format, you can see the payment provider is, is the Shopify payment the way this is formatted. So let's imagine that I'm gonna go over here and say, okay, let me look at the, the payment side of things. I'm gonna make this a skinny one and say we have payments. And then the payments, I'm gonna make this one wider. Let's imagine that we had PayPal payments. So some people paid by PayPal payments standard standard and let's say that they paid us then 
the uh, 1299.55. All right, so let's make this one a header. We're going to make it black and white by going to the home tab, font group, black and white. And then we're also going to have the Shopify payments. So I'm going to say Shopify payments. And that's going to be, let's say, 370.36. So what's happening here is we have multiple customers that bought stuff from our online Shopify store. Some of them bought stuff using the third party payment processor of PayPal. So the money is gonna ultimately then go through PayPal, which is also gonna be adding some fees to it that we will have to de de deal with on the PayPal level, possibly with the PayPal bank feed app connect thing. And then some of them paid with the Shopify pay and with like a credit card or something with Shopify, in which case they're paid through Shopify. And then Shopify is gonna add some of the fees, the fees on the payment. So the ones that actually were paid out from Shopify, we will have fees that were that were charged by them, right? So and then and then that money is gonna come from them to our checking account, which we will see on the bank feeds. Okay, so let's say we have then the total payments total payments is going to be equal to the sum of these two so there it is i'm going to make a slight adjustment over here and, and imagine that we also had sales tax uh, that we collected and so let's add that into our equation of let's say it was 15.45 so now we've got the uh, total sales of the 1669 uh, 91 and then the payouts that have taken place uh, that are broken out between the PayPal and the Shopify information. And obviously when I'm thinking about total sales, uh, we would have to be breaking this out for the sales tax because the sales tax is something that we collected that we're including in the total sales number here, but is actually not really sales from a tax perspective because we would have to be paying that out to, uh, to the tax collector. So we'll talk more about that in the future. So let's go into the, I'm going to format this and make this home tab uh, font group and let's put some borders around it. And then let's put an underline here. So we're going to do with the underline and then the amount that's going to be paid out by Shopify is going to have those fees. So now I'm going to put the payout here, the payouts from Shopify, the payouts from PayPal. We would see the fees from the PayPal side of things. So I'm going to say payouts on Shopify. Uh, black and white and let's say that this is going to be the gross amount which is going to be equal that that 370 36 and let's say that the fees from shopify are a negative 15.48 let's say and font group and underline that means the amount that's actually going to hit our bank account in the bank feeds is going to be equals to the sum of these two the 354.88 and that's what we put into our bank feeds in our example over here in the banking we would eventually see that amount pull in but obviously there's a lot of stuff happening that that in practice would be ideal to be able to to break out and we'll that's where we get into different methods of doing that and then on the paypal side we put the paypal payment in there here as of the full amount of the 129955 but likely PayPal would actually be charging fees on their end so the amount that actually hits our account might be less than that and if you use the PayPal app then it might give you this little little uh calculation here to actually break out the fees on the PayPal side if you're using PayPal which is kind of cool all right let's put some brackets around this and then let's I'm going to build a little worksheet to see this on a journal entry standpoint so that we can do some comparisons between these different methods. If you don't want to build the, the, this in Excel, you could you could just follow along if you so choose. But I'll build this out so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to make this skinny column by going to the home tab, format painter and make a skinny column over here. And then I'm going to say that we're going to have our journal entries journal entries uh, and I'll make this a little bit wider will be here and let's make this headers black and white and then I'm gonna make another skinny column so I'm gonna highlight this skinny home tab format painter and make a skinny eye column 
and then I'm gonna make like a trial balance. So this is gonna be our trial balance. And I'm gonna say these are the accounts, accounts. And then I'm gonna have the beginning trial. I'm gonna put on the second column balance. And then I'm gonna have our journal entries posted in the middle and then the end trial balance. That's gonna be our format. I'll bring this down to the bottom. I'm gonna make this a little wider, column J, and I'm gonna center these items by going to the home tab, alignment center. I'm gonna make this whole thing black and white, font group black and white. And then I'm gonna add my accounts. I'm gonna call it, I'm just gonna type these in here fairly quickly, checking. I'm gonna have a PayPal checking. This is like our chart of accounts. Shopify, PayPal, clearing. This is where we deal with these clearing accounts. We'll look about later. Shopify, payments, clearing, inventory, sales tax payable, equity, Shopify sales, Shopify, Shopify discounts, Shopify returns, Shopify shipping, income, cost of goods sold, and fees and charges. I may not have spelled all that correctly, but hopefully I did. And then I'm gonna say this will be the total debits and credits, and then I'll have my net income. Income. Now there's not gonna be anything in the starting number, so I'm just gonna put zero, 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 zeros in our starting numbers here. Zero, zero, zero. And then I'll sum this up equals the sum, just building a trial balance here, equals the sum of these. There we have it. And I'll put an underline here. And then my ending balance is just gonna be this plus the journal entry. So I'm gonna use my sum equals the sum of these two, enter. And I'm gonna put my cursor on the fill handle and drag that formula down. So I'm just summing across like so. And then this is summing up. So I'm gonna copy that across, fill handle here, copy that across, boom. Okay, my midpoint is right here. So everything above that's the balance sheet. Everything below that is the income statement, home tab, font group, I usually make that like a dark blue and white so I can see that midpoint. And then let's put some brackets around this whole thing. Could always use some brackets to help out bracketing. And then let's make this, uh, that's fine. And then let's make this middle column. This is where the data input's gonna go. I usually make that blue. Font tab, drop down, and I'm gonna go to the more colors and I'm in the standard color wheel. I'm gonna use that blue. That's the blue I like to use. So there it is. And then my net income is gonna be everything from equity down, income and expenses. So I'm gonna sum this up from here and copy that across like so. And then I could make this a little bit more fancy because if, if these are out of balance, it'll show that they're out of balance. I'm gonna use conditional formatting to make this a little fancy. So I'm gonna select these items, home tab, uh, conditional formatting. And I'm gonna say if this is less than, or let's say greater than, if it's greater than let's say two, so we have some rounding, I wanna make it red. And I'm gonna do it again, conditional formatting. If it's less than negative two, make it red. And then conditional formatting one more time. If it's between negative two and two, make it green. So now it's green. And if any of this turns into like three or negative three, it turns red. So 
muy bien. Let's go back here. So now that we have our format, I'm going to put some formatting here so I can see the blue formatting. I'm going to go to the home tab, font group, borders and blue. Now, if I was just, if I'm, if I, now I added all these accounts and I'm not going to use most of them in the first method and then we'll use them in the second method. Now, if I'm just going to wait till something clears the bank, what's going to happen? The easy method. What's the easy method? We're just going to say, all right, checking account is going to go up by this amount that's finally going to get there after all that other stuff happened. And then on the other side, we're just going to record that to Shopify uh, sales. So Shopify sales and boom, that's going to be the debit and the credit. So if you don't understand debits and credits, that's okay. It's, it's, it's going to, you can see the, the equaling process that's going to happen in the double entry accounting system. I'm going to post that into our ledger now, putting my cursor in L3. This equals the debit 354.88. And then the credit is going to be down here equals the 354.88. So that, of course, increases our net income. Notice negative numbers are actually good on the income statement. So I'm going to try to conditionally format this. So I'm going to select this whole thing and say what I would like it to do. Let's let's right click on it. I'm going to format this thing so it, so it's green when it's negative because so I'm going to format it and I'm going to say don't do that red thing. Don't do that red thing. And then I'm going to I'm going to make it standard usually be black and white. So I'm going to go down here and say let's make this black and white, but then I'm going to have it turn green if it's if it's a negative number because that's actually a positive net income. So I'm going to go up top because that's a credit, not a negative net income. So I'm going to say let's say if this is less than 0 then we want you to not be red, but be green custom for I'm going to do a custom one down here and just go to the font. And then uh, I want to change the color to like this green. So it's going to be that green. And then we could say if it's negative, it's going to turn red, but let's just keep it at that. I'm going to make these two black and white as well. So font group black and white. So there's our little custom formatting. And then on the PayPal side of things, what we will see ultimately is hopefully this amount coming into PayPal. So I'm going to say in the PayPal amount, we're going to have this 129955, which will in practice probably have fees related to it. But let's just imagine that full amount comes in from the PayPal side. And the other side, once again, is just going to go to income. Just a nice, easy transaction once it hits the checking account. I'm going to say negative of that number and let's post this. What's going to happen? The checking account for PayPal is going to go up and then Shopify sales has something in it. So I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it and say plus and point to this 129955 and enter. I'm going to make the columns a little bit wider so I could see that last bit. And there's our transactions and that's as easy you know, as it would be, that's all we would do. So we would, see if, it, if we were doing this method to wait till it comes through to hit the bank. Now, the problem of course is that this revenue isn't exactly accurate because, because there's other things happening. If I look at the detail of the report, uh, we had the discounts that are happening. We had, you know, shipping that we might break out separately. And then if we have sales tax that we're responsible for, we would have to come up with some type of method to make sure that we are in compliance with the uh, sales tax and paying out the sales tax in that case as well. Also, at the end of the year, what we're probably doing this for, uh, one primary purpose is to get an income statement if we're a small sole proprietor business so we can put it on the Schedule C for our income taxes. And we might get a 1099 from let's say we got a form 1099 that is set that says gross sales are 167.42 let's just say or let's say that the gross sales they're saying are equal to like this number let's just say that's what we got the 1099 for so the problem is if i if i highlight this i'll make this red and and white that 
if if I report on on my Schedule C this number because it's less than the amount that's reported on the 1099, and this might be an insignificant or immaterial amount right here, but if we had larger sales, it will become a material amount. The IRS is going to say, well, hey, it, I'm sh I'm showing on this 1099 that we have over here that you had more gross revenue than you are reporting. So, you know, the easiest way to kind of deal with that is to say, okay, well, the 1099 is, is correct. I'm going to assume the 1099 is correct. And the difference are all these other things, such as the fees over here and these other kind of categories, discounts and whatnot. And of course, I would still have to do deal with the sales tax because the sales tax would be uh, something I'd have to pay for sales tax. But in, but the general idea for federal income taxes is we might then be able to say at the end of the year, okay, well, I'm going to increase my Shopify sales to what the 1099 says, because I believe that's going to be correct. And I believe the difference is going to be fees, right? That would be the easiest kind of estimate or assumption to, type, to try to make. So at the end of the year, you might have something like, well, I'm just going to dump everything into fees for the difference between what the 1099 says and what, what my Shopify sales are, uh, which we're going to say, well, hold on, that's not exactly right. We're going to say it's going to be this minus, and I'm just going to hard code this number, uh, 1654.43. So it's a 15 difference, and I'm just going to put that into uh, the sales. So now the sales, so we're going to have the fees and the sales are going to go up. So now I'm going to say, okay, Shopify sales, I'm going to increase it by the 1548 to match in essence the 1099. And then I'm just going to assume the rest. I'm just going to dump it all into fees. Although there could be a whole bunch of things that is compiling to make basically that difference that would be the easiest kind of adjustment without all the detail to to try to to try to put in place now if you did this on in actually quickbooks here let's just mirror the same thing in quickbooks so now in the checking account we see this amount that's that's coming in to the checking account and obviously the easiest thing to do without any integrations or anything other than the bank feeds is just to say i'm going to add this and i'm going to put it into the sales for for Shopify. So we're going to put it into I'm just going to say Shopify sales, right? I'm just going to put it into an income account. And so this is going to it's it's going to increase then the checking account and it's going to go into the revenue account. So let's just add it from the bank feeds and I'm going to go back on over to my balance sheet and check it out. So now the checking account would increase. So I'm going to go into the activity here and we have our deposit. It was done with a deposit form. So if I go into the deposit, we see a deposit form uh, was created and the other side is just going to income, closing this back out, scrolling back up, exit that, the other side on income, tapping to the right, running the report. It goes into the Shopify sales. So there's our sales amount. And then the amount that was paid through PayPal would ultimately come through PayPal. It might not be for this full amount, however, because PayPal might have taken fees and likely would have taken fees on the PayPal processing side of things. But we'll just take it uh, from here. And so once again, it's going to go into the the income account for I'm just going to call it Shopify sales, right? So it's ultimately going to come in. Uh, to Shopify sales and I'm just going to charge it to Shopify sales and note that if you were using the PayPal commerce thing it might actually break out the fees that PayPal charges for you as well but I'm just going to add that so we're going to say all right now on the balance sheet if I run the balance sheet now we've got our checking account and we've got the PayPal acting in essence like a checking account with the bank feed set up and so some this both came from the same place, the Shopify store, but part of it got paid through the third party payment processor of PayPal. And then on the profit and loss, if I run the report here, we're going to say that we have this uh, 16 
5443. So it's quite easy to do. Now, of course, we have that sales tax issue, so we would still need to, to make sure that we have a system picked up so that we can pick up the, the sales tax. We might talk more about sales tax uh, in a future presentation, but that's going to be different depending on the different platforms you're going to use and, and what uh, tax uh, you're subject to with Shopify. So we might talk about that later. But now let's just think about at the end of the year, if you had that 1099 situation. So now we're saying, okay, the 10, I'm trying to do my taxes and the 1099 says I have uh, 1,669 of income. And we can just basically do a journal entry and assume it's it's fees, right? The difference, I'm gonna say, okay, I want my revenue to match at least to be as high as the 1099, which I assume is correct. And the, and the difference I would assume would be the fees so that I am reporting something on my taxes that it is at least as high as the reporting of the 1099 in gross sales uh, because the 1099 does not report net sales typically, it reports the gross, right? So I can go back on over and say, all right, let's 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 go over here and make a journal entry. And I'm gonna say at the, and this would happen like maybe at the end of the year, and you're gonna say, all right, journal entry. And we're gonna say that this is going to be as of 11.325, I think we're doing the month of November. And we're going to say this is fees and charges. So I'm just going to make an account called fees and charges tab. Now you could make this a cost of goods sold or an expense account. I'm just going to make it an expense account here. And then it's going to be fees and charges, not advertising. I'll just say it's other business expense. And then the other side is going to be Shopify sales. All right. So the fees and charges, it's for that 15.48. And then you might say to adjust uh, gross income to 10.99 or something like that. And then over here, the other side is 15.48 so there's our journal entry and i can say okay let's save it and close it and what happens on the income statement we can go over here and say let's run this and say okay i just did the simplest thing possible to try to say report everything based on the bank feeds i don't have all the detail of all the information being broken out but the the 1099 i know is supposed to be reported on gross sales so I can basically decide, try to say the difference of all that stuff is going to be the fees, right? So we have something at least on the income statement that possibly we can match out to, uh, to our Schedule C and work with. Now, obviously, we're still missing a lot of, we're still missing data that could be more detailed to help us with our internal kind of business decisions. And with the sales tax is all, is always going to be an, an added kind of thing that we have to make sure that we have some type of system to be dealing with sales tax being a, a different type of thing depending on whether we're dealing with a shopify situation versus an amazon situation and whether we're dealing with sales tax in our location state or are subject to sales tax in other kind of locations as well but that's the general idea and so next time we'll we'll map out a similar kind of thing here but imagine that we are going to then uh then break it out and 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 use kind of a journal entry method to break out more of the detail uh using using a report method meaning we're going to imagine we look at a report in shopify and then enter a journal entry and use the clearing accounts to as we go enter more detail as opposed to uh, kind of kind of just adjusting to the 1099 like at the end of the year. So a bit more complex method that provides us more detail.